Welcome to Cedar Point. Today, we are going to be riding every single ride, every single roller coaster here at Cedar Point. Um, and along the way, we are going to be ranking every single ride. We're also going to be talking about the five different aspects that I have selected for our rankings today. Those aspects are the STEVS ranking system. I love making these really, really cheesy acronyms. Those five criteria are smooth. Is the ride smooth? Technology. Did it have incredible technology for its time, the time that it was made? And uh, also, that's kind of the equalizer of the group if the ride is an older ride. Excitement. Is it an incredibly exciting ride? Does it make my heart just beat out of my chest? Views. Does it have beautiful views? And speed. How fast does it go? That's simply all it is. And of course, speed does not necessarily have to do with how fast it physically goes, but how fast it feels, and if that feeling is a good feeling or not. Um, so, I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. Let's go. All right, it is 9.08. I'm on my way into Cedar Point right now for a day of riding as many coasters as I possibly can and ranking them. Now, usually my cardinal rule is you do not ride Raptor first thing in the morning. But if it says a zero minute wait and you don't see anybody in line, go for it. <laughs> And that's exactly what we're at right now. It is pretty much a straight walk on, um, lending toward maybe like a three minute wait. I can deal with that, let's go. That was a zero minute wait. I mean, really maybe like a two minute wait to get into line right now. Um, ready to get on this very next train, let's go. All right, and ride number one is done. Right now we are going to head back to Valraven and see what kind of a line that looks like if Val Raven does not look like a pretty small weight, then we're going to move back toward Millennium Force and further into Maverick and Steel Vengeance right after that. The rides to the right after you get to Coaster's Drive-In. Drive Those are going to be your shortest waits of the morning. Those you can wait until everyone else has come into the park around 10 or 11 o'clock. If you come in at 10 or 11, then those are probably your best bet to get a lot of rides done in the morning. Now, since today we are ranking every ride, is Raptor a smooth ride? Absolutely not. It's not smooth at all. Now, it's not the worst until the very end. <laughs> the very end, you come into that landing and you just hit really hard. Um, that part jostles you really bad. The rest of it, just imagine being a toddler in John Cena's hands. That's what you are. It's just tossing you and turning you and flipping you upside down, doing all kinds of crazy things. That is what you are <laughs> on that ride. The technology for 1994 was pretty amazing. It does have a lot of loops on it. Even today, it still has a lot of loops. It is crazy exciting. Once again, imagine being a toddler in John Cena's hands. That's exciting, no? The views are really pretty non-existent. It's not really like a view-centric ride. Um, so it's going to get a little bit lower of a ranking on that level. But it is extremely fast. The entire time you are on that ride, you are just moving at warp speed. Um, it doesn't feel as fast because you come into more obstacles along the way than, say, like on Millennium Force. But it is definitely a fun ride. It is very enjoyable. And at this point, it receives number one for every single category. Now, that's gonna change throughout the day, but that ride, Raptor, will be the ride upon which every other ride is judged today. <laughs> so, that's either a good thing for Raptor or it's a bad thing, I'm not sure. We're gonna have to see, so let's go. And uh, right now, we are in the line for Val Raven. We are going to um, hopefully hit a ton of rides this morning. This has a very, very short wait also this morning so it is definitely worth a hop in line because this one has just been added now actually to the fast lane plus lane um, in lieu of having top thrill dragster because this thing does get huge lines throughout the day so 
Let's go. Once again, this is about a three minute wait for Valraven today, right now. Okay, if you're looking for a smooth ride, Valraven is top of your list, especially between the two that we've done so far. Um, Valraven is a great ride for smoothness. It, it feels like, I always compare it to feeling like you're a diving bird. Um, you're just in the air, you found your prey, and you just swoop down on them. It's very smooth. It feels like you're cutting through butter, you're flying through the air, you're swimming, however you want to say it. It just feels like you are in an almost frictionless existence. The technology on Valraven, Valraven was made somewhere around, I think, 2016, maybe 2015. I don't remember exactly. Like I said with Raptor, it has so many inversions. Plus, it was the very first vertical drop roller coaster here at Cedar Point at the time of its creation. Are the two really comparably, like, overstated with technology? I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna give that one to Raptor. I'm gonna have to give that one to Raptor. Excitement is actually gonna go to Raptor also. I love Valraven, but there's something intensely exciting and heart pumping about Raptor. So that one's gonna go to Raptor also. Millennium Force has a very, very good line weight. Like I said last time I was here, it is kind of like tier two. two. So if you didn't start immediately with the rides at the back of the park, then get to Millennium Force before everyone else enters the park if you have a gold or a platinum pass. Um, Cause you will have a very, very short line before the fast lane people and the rest of um, the park opens to the general public rather than just the pass holders. Between Raptor or Valraven, I have to give Valraven the views. Um, Valraven has excellent views of the park itself. Um, where Raptor, you, you basically just kind of see some stalls. You do see down the midway um, when you are first coming up over that very first hill. Beyond that, you're moving so fast, you're really not noticing any views. However, Valraven, even while you're moving, you have such smooth turns and moves um, that you actually can have some cognizance and see the rest of the park while you're moving there. It's a great place to watch fireworks when they have the special fireworks for the 150th celebration. I rode that ride a couple times during fireworks and uh, it's really pretty. Like you could see the light show and you could see the fireworks um, while that's all going on. Um, so there are uh, several times when you have some pretty beautiful views um, while you're on Valraven, but especially cresting up over that first hill and actually looking out over the entirety of the park is probably your, your best part of views for Valraven. Raptor won excitement, but Valraven wins speed. Um, speed for Valraven is just so much fun because you never have really any obstacles that you are running into. Like I said, it's like cutting through butter when you're riding that ride. Um, so every time you go down one of the one of the hills, you're just speeding down. <laughs> uh, it feels like there's nothing standing in your way. Where when you are on Raptor, you're running into a lot of obstacles. You're doing a lot of flips. You're doing a lot of corkscrews. Um, you are doing all kinds of different like barrel turns. Like there's all kinds of stuff that's happening while you're on that. Again, being flipped by John Cena. So average together, Val Raven barely edges out Raptor. Let's keep going. Let's see how Millennium Force compares now. Millennium is running all three of their trains today, which means this is going to be a very, very quick line. Your phone is I have in this line at 947. Your it is now when 10 o'clock. And again, and, uh, take I'm your seat back and your seat belt right now. down that lap bar. All right, Millennium Force is one of my favorite rides of all time. Um, that ride is still one of the absolute best here in the park. Um, however, I am going to give the edge in smoothness to Valraven. I do think Valraven has just a bit more of a smoother experience overall. Uh, this one is going so fast that there is just a little bit of back and forth motion like jerkiness. Um, not much, it's very, very small, but I would say it's a little bit less smooth than Valraven overall. In 2000 when that ride was made, Millennium Force was the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the world. So obviously it wins in technology every time as far as that one goes. As far as excitement goes, I mean, is there even a question <laughs> that is 
definitely Millennium's territory. Um, Millennium, once again, wins that category absolutely hands down, at least for me. Millennium Force also has the most beautiful views in the park, or at least some of the most beautiful views in the park. Um, as you're going up that first lift hill, there, if you look over to the left, you have just a gorgeous scape of the entirety of uh, Sandusky. You can see like the downtown area there, skyline if you will. <laughs> um, and you can also see, um, if you look to the right, you can see the entire park. It is a beautiful ride on the way up um, and also on the way down. As far as speed goes, this is another one that Millennium Force wins absolutely hands down. Overall, Millennium Force receives first place out of the three rides that we've reviewed so far. I would say that Rougarou is absolutely horribly not smooth. <laughs> it's jerky, it beats your head up, uh, kind of beats the hell out of you, to be honest. Um, if you are riding it, push your head to the back. That's the best advice I can give you. It's still gonna hurt your head. It's still gonna hurt your neck. No matter what you do, it does um, lessen the sensation of hurt though. So, I mean, <laughs> if you wanna do it, then do it. Just know what you're getting into. Somehow, I feel like wait times are way down today. Today is a Saturday, but I am just booking it through these rides. Uh, Gatekeeper right now says a five minute wait. So we're gonna go head out to Gatekeeper. See if we can hop on that now that the rest of the park has opened. And uh, hopefully we'll only have maybe two big lines today of Maverick and Steel Vengeance. So, I mean, I'm down for it. So let's go. Almost every ride that Cedar Point has ever created has had a high threshold for technology at the time that they created it. However, I would say that probably Rougarou falls on the lower spectrum of that. Now, it was a stand-up roller coaster at the time that it was built, and that was something um, to be admired. At this point, it is not a stand-up coaster. Um, it is just kind of your basic four-seat coaster. It's very fun. I really enjoy it. It does hurt, <laughs> um, but that doesn't mean that it is bad technology, but it does receive from me the lowest marks on technology so far um, out of any of the rides that we've had here so far today. I bought new shoes yesterday and uh, I already have blisters. There's a reason why you should not wear new shoes to a theme park, because they hurt. <laughs> so if you do buy new shoes, make sure to have tall socks. I've hiked mine up over where the blisters are. Hopefully that will stay it for a little bit but it does not feel good all right i think this is even less than a 15 minute wait for gatekeeper and like i said online it's at a five minute wait so i have a feeling the app is correct in this case rougarou also gets last place when it comes to excitement that excitement factor for rougarou is just it's not one that i absolutely love so it receives a little bit lower <laughs> than val raven <laughs> for me if Raptor didn't have much in the way of views, then Rougarou has even less. Um, Rougarou and Raptor, I would say, are pretty similar in a lot of ways. Um, but Raptor has at least a view of the midway. Um, when you get on Rougarou, Rougarou has just a view of a dirty lake for pretty much the entire run. Now, you can see over into a couple of different lines. Like, you can see the Millennium Cube from the top. But... While you're there, that's also the scariest part of Rougarou. So, uh, not that that part where you're just you just go down, you're way high, and uh, ooh, not my favorite part. But <laughs> it's still a fun ride. It's just the views are not awesome for that ride. And I would also say that speed for Rougarou is probably its worst part. I mean, at least when you get on Raptor, it feels very fast. It feels. Uh, really like it's moving forward like at breakneck speed when you're riding Rougarou it feels a little bit more slow motion which isn't bad I actually kind of like that especially the first half of the ride but it's not exactly the fastest ride so it also gets last place for me for Rougarou 
I obviously don't really love that ride, don't I? <laughs> well, that was easy. Rougarou received fourth place because it has a, it got fourth place in every single category. So that was easy. Now it's time for me to ride Gatekeeper. And even after riding the ride, Gatekeeper still has almost no line. <laughs> Nothing that you could see from the execute at all. The plan was for me to go to Wicked Twister right now, um, but Wicked Twister is not open, and you know how I feel about waiting in lines for rides that are not open. So we're passing this one. When it comes to the smooth factor, Gatekeeper is pretty good, pretty good. But I will put it lower than both Valraven and Millennium Force because those rides are much, much smoother there. Uh, fast, you feel like you're cutting through butter. Ever since Gatekeeper reopened after its famous closure this year when um, when the lift hill uh, chain snapped and they had to fix it, um, after that, it's been a bit more jerky. Now, it has gotten better um, since then, since it first reopened, but uh, I don't know, maybe they still need some oil? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still a great ride, of course. Just a little bit less smooth than it used to be. Gatekeeper was only opened within the last decade. At that point, there definitely existed the technology for years to have created a coaster very similar to Gatekeeper. So I'm gonna put Gatekeeper very low. At the very bottom of the list, it gets fifth place for technology for Gatekeeper. I'm gonna say the Gatekeeper shines when it comes to excitement. Um, Millennium Force, of course, I actually think that Millennium Force is better at excitement than Gatekeeper is, but Millennium Force um, has that speed factor on it, and that's why it's exciting. Gatekeeper has that near miss factor, and that's what makes it such an exciting ride. Um, so I definitely put that very high on the list for Gatekeeper. Um, first of all, you're going Oh, right over the front entrance, you go through both of those two like uh, needle holes um, that just make you feel like near misses on both sides of your body. Um, it's 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 a fantastic ride. Like <laughs> I can't really speak too highly of Gatekeeper. So, um, but it does receive second place on excitement. When it comes to views, on the other hand, I'm not sure that you can get any better than Gatekeeper. Um, like I said, Gatekeeper wasn't built with a high hand toward technology, but it was built with the idea that it was basically like the opening area to the park. It's, it's what gets you excited and pumped when you walk through those first gates, hence its name. It's really made with a penchant toward the idea of incredible views. Um, so I would say that Gatekeeper, absolutely its best feature is the views that you have. And I'm honestly not sure that there are better views that you can find here at Cedar Point than when you ride Gatekeeper. So I put Gatekeeper at number one out of all the rides that we've reviewed so far today here at Cedar Point. Yes, I do think that it has better views than Millennium Force. Last time I was here, Corkscrew had a 105 minute wait. That's ridiculous. It's way too long for this ride. At this point, it is extremely low. This is a zero minute wait. Literally, we're going to walk right on. Um, so let's go. This is much more reasonable for, <laughs> for Corkscrew. How was your ride? Corkscrew had literally a one minute wait. I'm gonna be on it in like another 30 seconds. Let's go. All right, so how to do corkscrew? <laughs> push, push your head forward for the very first hill you go over. When you go down the hill, you come back up over a hill. Go, keep your head forward. As soon as you get over that first hill, then you are going to go through a loop right away. When you get to that loop, push your head back. As soon as you're done with that loop, you'll go back up over another hill. Push your head forward, keep it there. It'll help you to feel a little bit better and not quite so dizzy. Then, as soon as you're done with that, you'll make the round around into the corkscrews. Put your head back, push it back against the seat as hard as you can, 
and it will make you feel a little bit better. So <laughs> that is my recommendation. <laughs> do those, do those like four different steps. Uh, you'll feel better on it. That doesn't make it a better ride necessarily. Gatekeeper is the number five ride out of the five rides that we've ridden so far here at Cedar Point for speed. Uh, gate, like I said, Gatekeeper's forte is its views. It is not its speed. It doesn't have to do with the biggest thrills or the highest hills. It has to do with the most beautiful views that you can have of both the beach and of the park itself. It is made to be a statement. It is not made to be um, a record-breaking coaster. So it is a little bit different, but it is also one of my favorites personally. Now, this list is not necessarily my personal favorites list. Of course, you cannot separate your opinion from any kind of a ranking list whatsoever. It's impossible. But I am trying to be as objective in my own head as I possibly can be um, on these criteria. So don't get mad if you don't agree with my opinion. Write your opinion down below. Whether that is an objective list or it is a subjective list, does not matter. Write what your list, your favorites, your ranking of Cedar Point is down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Gatekeeper receives fourth place out of the five rides that I've reviewed so far um, here at Cedar Point today. Now, it's looking like this is the best day I possibly could have done all of these rankings because it's looking like I might actually get to ride all of them. So far, I have ridden six rides. Now, I haven't ranked all six yet. <laughs> That's coming up next. But six rides, and it has only been two hours here in the park. So let's keep going and ride some more rides and also rank them and see what we find. Corkscrew. Ugh. That thing is not smooth at all. That thing is awful. <laughs> it beats the hell out of you. <laughs> which sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? But it's not a good thing in this case. <laughs> that thing hurts so bad. Um, now, like I said earlier, there are some ways to minimize its uh, effects, but it's, uh, it's still gonna hurt no matter what you do. Now, I don't know this because research, never heard of her, but uh, Corkscrew was made a long time ago. I do know that much. Um, I have a feeling it was pretty technologically advanced at the time. Just that first hill all the way up, when you get up there, it does feel high. It feels like you've gone pretty decently high <laughs> by the time that you get to the top of that first hill. And I can only imagine in the 60s or 70s that that ride did have some pretty high uh, emotional impact. I do know that Blue Streak was made in the 60s, so that ride, if it was in the 70s, um, it's substantially higher, or at least it feels higher. Maybe it's just because of the lack of supports around you, but it does feel higher than Blue Streak does. So um, I'm gonna say that probably that was, that was a boon for it at the time, and I'm gonna put it relatively high. It gets fourth place out of Valraven for uh, technology for our Cedar Point rides here. I would put Corkscrew and Raptor at pretty much the same level for both of them. Um, both Corkscrew and Raptor both have views of parking lots, but they also have some other pretty cool views. Actually, the view to the left um, of the Breakers Hotel is pretty cool when you are on Corkscrew. It still gets relatively low. I gave it fourth place out of six rides so far um, here at Cedar Point. Corkscrew has a lot of obstacles to go over. It also has a lot of friction and it is very shaky. It also just doesn't go that high overall. Now, it might have felt high when it was made, but it doesn't feel that high anymore. It's definitely not a smooth ride, and because of that, it gets sixth place out of all of the rides that we've ridden, um, out of six rides that we've ridden here at Cedar Point for speed, um, because it really just doesn't feel that fast overall. Hi there. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? Five minute line for Magnum, otherwise known as a walk on. Corkscrew also receives sixth place for excitement. When it hurts that bad, it's not exciting. <laughs> That's not an exciting thing to do when it hurts. Corkscrew receives sixth place 
out of all of the rides I've ridden so far, which happens to be six. So it has last place right now, and uh, this surprises nobody. All right, Magnum. Magnum is a great ride, it is very fun. However, it is not smooth. It is the first hyper coaster, which um, is probably the reason why it's not smooth because they had built a ride that was faster and larger and steeper than anything that had come before it. So um, that hyper status gives it some leeway in particular, um, but um, it also is one that the entire time you're doing it, you are being shaken back and forth. It's very similar in concept to Millennium Force, but not nearly as smooth as Millennium Force. So I give Magnum fourth place um, as far as smoothness goes out of seven rides so far. So far, it is not as smooth as Gatekeeper, but it is more smooth than Rugeru. Like I said, Magnum was the very first hyper coaster ever. So I give Magnum first place for technology overall. Um, it is the original. It's the one that did it first. Millennium Force, even though it's smoother, and I think executed the idea better. Um, Magnum is the one who originally came up with the concept of that huge coaster going incredibly fast, huge steep hills. Um, it is the one that did it first. Magnum is a very exciting roller coaster, um, but it also feels like an imitation and it's not as good as some of the others. I know it's not actually an imitation, it's actually the like original. Um, but when you can compare Millennium Force to Magnum, that's just not quite as exciting as Millennium Force. Um, also, it hurts, so that takes a lot of the excitement factor down for me. So I gave it fifth place after Val Raven out of the seven coasters that I have ranked and reviewed so far. All right, now the question is, which one is best for views, Gatekeeper or Magnum? And I think I'm gonna have to say that Gatekeeper still wins this round for views. Um, I do absolutely love the views on Magnum. You crest up over the very top of that hill, and first of all, you see the beautiful views of the lake, but then as you are going down, you also see just incredible fun views of the water park also. You can see everyone swimming, standing in lines for rides. It is definitely a fun experience doing that. Then you also go up and down right along the coast of Lake Erie, which is also great. It is the ride that feels the most like you go out onto the water when you are riding it. So that definitely is something that beefs up the experience uh, for that ride. But it also is much faster than Gatekeeper. And Gatekeeper was built for the views. It just wasn't built for the excitement. It wasn't built for the speed. Um, this Magnum was not built for the views. Magnum was built for the speed, for the thrills, for the excitement. So I gotta hand this one to Gatekeeper. However, speed is the thing that Magnum does much, much better. I still gave it third place overall because I do think that both Val Raven and Millennium Force do speed better than Magnum does, um, especially because Magnum does have that little jerky factor, but Magnum is still a fun, great experience for that like really fast um, hyper coaster experience. Um, right now it's time for a little bit of water and then for our next ride. We got a five minute wait here for pipes. It is once again an extremely hot day. Um, so right now is a great time for me to stop, take a little bit of a rest and get some water in my system while I figure out where Pipe Scream actually exists <laughs> in this list. <laughs> so let's go. All right, Magnum and Val Raven are now tied for second place. And also Gatekeeper and Raptor have switched places. So that does happen from time to time because Raptor is sinking lower in some in most rankings but still has like one higher ranking um but gatekeeper is kind of staying more in the middle of the pack so i, I love watching as the different rankings kind of 
even out. By the way, if you haven't seen this before, this is exactly the way that I have ranked and reviewed uh, Disney movies uh, for the last couple of years. That's what I did on this channel before I started doing Cedar Point. Um, I did open a second channel and I am doing that again over on my Disney channel. Now it's on the second channel though. I'm actually probably going to be um, starting that up again soon here. Um, but it may be a little bit less detailed than it was before because I was putting a ton of time and effort into those reviews. So if you want to check those out, I'd love for you to go check that out. It's on my Disney channel. You can check it out on my front, on my first page. I'll also have it linked below um, so that you can see uh, that if you are interested. Now, when it comes to rides here at Cedar Point, Pipe Scream is definitely not one of my favorites. However, it is very smooth. It does get third place for smoothness right behind Millennium Force. Even though it is considered one of the 17 roller coasters here at Cedar Point, Pipe Scream really has no technology and it really is not a roller coaster. <laughs> like, I don't know that I would classify it as a roller coaster other than that the park does. It is really more of a carnival ride kind of an idea. Um, but because of that, I do not rank it high in technology. It's not one that is is up there <laughs> with all the rest. It receives last place for technology out of all the rides reviewed so far, which I believe is eight so far. Pipe scream doesn't hurt, but it's also not exciting. <laughs> it's just not a ride that I really love. It is smooth. It's not one that's exciting. It's very low intensity. Um, you just kind of go around in a circle for a while and you go up and down a hill while you are doing that. That's all it really is. Um, it's not something that I think is particularly worthwhile, um, but it is still a fun ride. So it also receives eighth place um, for excitement. You do not even go high in the air for Pipe Scream. <laughs> so you don't really get any views at all. About the best view is of the walkway and of the um, kids area to your other side. Um, that's all you're gonna get. Um, it's not something that's particularly great. Uh, so absolutely, once again, it receives eighth place for Pipe Scream for views. Once again, another eighth place finish for Pipe Scream. It, for speed, it really doesn't go very fast. Um, again, it's a carnival ride, essentially, so it's not something that is particularly high in thrills. It's not particularly high in speed. About the highest ranking for this thing is for smoothness. Gemini says a five minute wait on the app and a zero minute wait on the sign. <laughs> Either way, it's very, very low. We're not really gonna have much of an issue. So, let's go. Uh, no. Now, is Gemini smooth? Absolutely not. <laughs> it hurts real bad. And especially if I'm hungry, it hurts real bad. So right now, I'm headed down to, you guessed it, Back Beat Q for some lunch. I am very, very hungry. It is about 12.45 and I'm definitely ready to eat. So. Let's go. Cool thing is it's 1237 and I have already ridden nine rides and uh, I've been really taking my time. Like I could have ridden way more because I've stopped in between every single ride to discuss uh, where that ride ranks and have uh, spent a considerable amount of time just trying to figure out where the actual rankings are at the very end, the overall rankings. I mean today, it's a Saturday. I'm amazed at the lack of crowds that are here at Cedar Point today. Maybe they're just waiting for the fall. Uh, maybe people are just too exhausted by school starting to show up here today. Maybe it'll get horribly busy in the evening. I don't know, but for right now, I mean, I'm enjoying getting a lot accomplished. So let's just keep going. Burnt ends are looking great today. Now, right now, this is the time that I can spend some time ranking the last couple of rides I've done. So let's go. All right, the band is playing beside me here. Uh, and Gemini, okay, so I already said that Gemini is not smooth, and it is not. I gave it eighth place out of nine rides because it is more smooth than uh, Corkscrew. Corkscrew really hurts. All the others, I don't complain about them hurting. Um, I almost ranked it a little bit higher, but the problem is 
I don't complain about raptor hurting. I don't re I don't complain about my stomach hurting after Magnum, but it does hurt every single time I ride Gemini because things dig into you, you get jostled so much. So Gemini receives eighth place out of nine rides that we have ridden so far today. Gemini, when it was made, would have been one of those groundbreaking rides like Millennium Force or Magnum. Just look at the difference between the steel coaster of Corkscrew and then going to Gemini, which is a wooden coaster. Gemini was huge. So in the 80s, it would have been just absolutely groundbreaking. So I give it third place for technology out of the nine rides that we have yet ranked. Between Gemini and Magnum, Gemini is the one that I consistently see people excited to have ridden it. As soon as they get off, they're usually high-fiving each other and laughing and, you know, things like that. I think it really butches it up that it is a racing coaster. People really like that, and especially since it's a bigger coaster, that racing element makes it even more fun. So I have put Gemini right at the middle of the pack at fifth place, because I do think there are some other coasters that are more exciting generally, such as Valraven in particular, um, Raptor, and Millennium Force um, that people seem to also really enjoy, but Gemini is one that every time I ride it, people seem to be excited that they've ridden it, even though it does hurt. By nature, as a wooden coaster, Gemini just doesn't have a lot of views to it. Um, so you really don't see a whole lot. You do on the way up just a little bit, but most of that is looking into the parking lot next to it or looking into the line on the other side. Um, you just don't see a whole lot on it. So because of that, I'm giving it eighth place out of nine rides that I've ridden so far today. When it initially opened its doors, I think Gemini would have been just huge on the speed factor. Um, it's really not anymore because it's been overshadowed by so many other rides. So I give it seventh place so far for speed here in Cedar Point. I give Gemini sixth place out of nine rides that have been written and reviewed so far by me today. So now it is time. I've eaten. It is time to move on to Frontier Town where our biggest and baddest rides lie and also where our longest wait times lie. So let's go. Well, my app says steal vengeance for 15 minutes. Yes, please. I don't know if it just went down and opened back up or what, but we're gonna check it out. Even if it's a half hour, that's a win for me in my book. I think it may just be the oppressive heat that is causing people not to be here today. I think that may be the only real factor. And I guess it lets me on a few more rides faster and lets me enjoy my day a little bit better and slower than I would have to otherwise. It does look like the line says 15 minutes. Even the physical sign says that. I'll be amazed if it's actually 15 minutes. But let's start the clock now. Let's see what we have. This really might be a 15 minute wait. Oh my word. How is this park so empty today? Is it just the heat? I mean, I guess in all fairness, it does kind of make sense. This queue is much, much hotter than um, the Mavericks queue. Mavericks queue right now does say a 75 minute wait and I can see how the majority of that would be in the shade. So that seems possible, I suppose. I do love these free lockers. Hear that again, free lockers. You can take a few things on to be small lockers, but they are free. It appears we may have made a great decision because Steel Vengeance is now at a 30 minute line. So I'm hoping I made a good decision. We're gonna make a quick cut through the Emporium here. 
and go check out Maverick. Steel Vengeance physically says 45 minutes, but then it the app says 75 minutes, so not quite sure which one, but I'm going into the air conditioner at the Last Chance Saloon right now. Nope, I don't wait in line for those things. I would rather walk around aimlessly all day long than wait in lines for food or bathrooms. That's where I draw the line. Instead, I'm gonna plump a seat right here and uh, figure out what our rankings were for that last ride. Five minute wait for Cedar Creek Mine Ride. So, this is what I'm hitting right now. After this, I'm gonna go find a bathroom. But this ride happens to let out right into a bathroom, basically. So, let's go. I'm just gonna go on record and say that Steel Vengeance is the smoothest ride here at Cedar Point. It may not be the least like back and forth because you do have a lot of you know twists and turns that happen in it, but it is extremely smooth even with those twists and turns. So I've ranked it at number one for the smooth factor. Steel Vengeance was built in 2018 as a reconversion of an older wooden roller coaster that was already here called Mean Streak. I would say it, it is impressive technology, but it is not probably the most cutting edge technology that you've ever seen. Um, it is very fast, it is very smooth, it is very exciting, but technology probably wavers just a little bit more. Um, so I put it at fourth out of all 10 rides that I have reviewed at this point. Steel Vengeance is an extremely exciting ride. However, for me, it does scare me a bit more than excite me at a couple different points. And this time I rode it in the left seat. I actually think I like the right seat better. So go figure that one out. But because it scares me a bit more than excites me, um, I'm going to put it just one lower than Millennium Force. So it is at second place um, for the excitement factor. Now, views is definitely its weak spot. Um, when you're looking out over the top of Gatekeeper. It is a little bit pretty. You can see over the park a little bit. But then beyond that time, um, there's very little in the way of views because you are mostly in the middle of the ride itself. Plus, you are also going too fast to really be able to take in any views um, that even are presented. There are a couple times when you can see just a little bit outside, but it is very few and far between. And like I said, you're just moving too fast. So. Uh, it receives 7th place out of 10 rides for views. However, speed is Steel Vengeance's high point. Um, Steel Vengeance is moving extremely fast right after that initial crazy straight down drop. From that point on, you are just moving at breakneck speed. However, there are still um, obstacles in your way. Like, you're going through tons of barrel rolls throughout the time. I think it's like six different barrel rolls and um, a couple other kinds of turns also that are a little bit different um, throughout that time. So those generally would make any ride kind of slow down a little bit, but that does not happen with Steel Vengeance because once again, you are going, you are cutting through like butter. Like uh, it is, <laughs> Steel Vengeance is so smooth, even though it is kind of a crazy ride. So. With, with that in mind, I gave it second place just behind Millennium Force for speed because you are just moving at such a quick speed through a lot of turns also, which uh, really does set it apart from a lot of the other rides. You don't feel quite like Superman though, and that's the difference between Steel Vengeance and Millennium Force. Overall, I rated Steel Vengeance at second place just behind Millennium Force. Cedar Creek Mine Ride really hurts, like, <laughs> I, I appreciate a sunburn more than I appreciate Cedar Creek Mine Ride when I am on it. Um, although I'm a glutton for punishment, so I just keep coming back to Cedar Creek Mine Ride anyway because I do enjoy it. It is a small ride. It's a ride I'm very excited to ride with my daughter, but it is not a ride that I absolutely love um, because it does hurt. Like it, it hurts like hell. <laughs> it is not. It's not a fun ride to ride. <laughs> The only thing I rated lower for smoothness out of the Cedar Point rides that we've ridden so far 
is corkscrew um, because Cedar Creek Mine Ride just is uh, it, it hurts. <laughs> I also rated Cedar Creek Mine Ride at second lowest for technology throughout the park also or at least throughout the park with these 11 rides I've ridden so far. Um, it is not a ride that I think is particularly technologically advanced even at the time that it was built. Um, it is a smaller wooden slash steel coaster. Um, it's nothing to write home about. It's nothing that's huge. It's nothing that's, I mean, there's just nothing really that stands out about it. Um, but it is a fun family coaster and I think that's what it does best. So, I mean, I'm not here to knock it. It's just not one of the best rides that's here at Cedar Point. I am actually ranking Cedar Creek Mine Ride at 11th out of the 11 rides that we have ridden today here at Cedar Point. There's just nothing that makes this ride stand out. Um, about the most exciting part of Cedar Creek Mine Ride is the ride operators. The ride operators are really, really fun. But I would say actually that when riding the ride, I've seen so many people, including myself, come off of Cedar Creek Mine Ride with a yawn on their mouth or with like a really sick look on their face. Um, it's, ne it's almost never one that people are really excited to get off of because it's just beat the shit out of you for that entire time. <laughs> so <laughs> um, instead, I, I would say the most exciting part of Cedar Creek Mine Ride is actually the ride, the ride operators because they're very self-aware. They know that they are at the, the ride at the park that's just kind of the most met out of any of the rides here and uh, they live it up. They make fun of themselves and they make fun of the ride a little bit. Um, there's definitely a self-aware quality of humor that I really appreciate. Um, when going on the ride because of the ride operators. So that makes it really fun and that makes it stand out as a, as a piece of entertainment um, more than the ride itself. Cedar Creek Mine Ride does not have extensive views, but it does have some views and probably one of the best parts of the ride itself is the views onto the rest of the park. You get a really good view of Dragster, you get a really good view of kind of straight down across the lake, across the water, um, almost to the midway. Um, so because of that, when you're at the very top of the ride, you do get a couple views. Now, that still doesn't give it incredible views. It does put it above Gemini and Rougarou, but that only gives it eighth place out of the 11 rides that have been reviewed and ranked so far today. Cedar Creek Mine Ride doesn't have much to write home about with with speed either, but it is worth about 10th place um, when it comes to speed out of 11 rides so far. It, it does go faster than Pipe Scream. That's about all I can say about it. Cedar Creek Mine Ride gets 11th place even over Pipe Scream, which kind of surprises me, but I, I think all, overall, I, I actually think that makes sense. Maverick has continued to say 75 minutes all day long today. So, I have every hope of finding it to be like a 45 minute line or an hour line or an hour line rather than 75 minutes, but we're going to see what we find. All right. This is looking like a nice size line. It says 45 minutes. I have definitely waited in this line for much, much longer than what it looks like this line might actually be. There is part of the line that is not open in the inside covered area also. So that bodes well for me. According to my YouTube comments, Steel Vengeance was incredibly popular this morning. Uh, I don't know how to give the right tips on this one situation here. If you, it, it is a good idea to go to the back of the park and generally ride Steel Vengeance quickly. But if you notice that the park feels less full, that the numbers are not as high for wait times for the day, um, it may be a good thing actually to wait just a few minutes um, or a couple of hours really to ride Steel Vengeance because you got to let that first crowd go through 
and then if they start to realize everything is less busy, they'll move away from Steel Vengeance and they'll go ride other rides other than Steel Vengeance. Um, so they'll be like, now they're riding Val Raven and they're riding the rides up at the front. There is a lot of intuition that has to go into planning your day at Cedar Point, of course, but really at any theme park. Um, you just kind of have to read where the audience is going, where the crowds are going, and s try to stay away from that area of the park as much as you possibly can. Um, I mean, unless you're a mind reader, you're never going to get it completely right. God knows I never have gotten it completely right, but um, today that was a good call on my part to ride the rides up at the front of the park because the back of the park was busy with people trying to get on Seal Vengeance because it's a Saturday. You would think today was going to be extremely popular, but so far the lines have not been huge by any means. This is not a typical Saturday at all. Um, so it's, I guess that's just something to think about <laughs> um, in your planning of your theme park day. Um, like I said, no one's always going to get it right. You are always going to find something that you do wrong every time because audiences are unpredictable. All right, back row of Maverick, here we go. This has been about a 35 minute wait for Maverick. We're on our way right now to get onto the ride. Our train just pulled up and it is time for me to go. So, wish me luck. Funny thing is, I enjoyed that more today than I've enjoyed that all year. And with that, I've ridden every big ride that's going to have a big wait. So, now I'm planning to take the train. It doesn't even look like it's opened yet, so it looks like I will walk in at the perfect time. And we're going to walk all the way up to the front. I did find another place with popcorn. Sagebrush Sue's. Sagebrush Sue's. Try to say that 10, th 10 times fast. My word. What a perfect place to figure out our rankings for Maverick. Maybe there's just something special about today, or maybe it's the fact that I was in the back seat on Maverick, but whatever it was, Maverick was really, really good today. So, as far as smooth goes, I mean, Maverick today was so smooth. It was so fast. It was so... It just felt like there was no... Uh, no friction there at all just just flying <laughs> and uh, that was really good so I actually put it I actually put Maverick number one today in 2007 when Maverick was created um, <laughs> there was no such thing as a track that went up and then went under I mean we had just gotten Millennium Force and Millennium Force is still incredible but Millennium Force was about as steep as we had ever seen a ride be. And then all of a sudden, we got Maverick that didn't just go straight down. It actually went like at 95 degrees under the track as it fell. So, as far as technology goes, I didn't place it at number one because you still had those, those huge rides that had been really, really groundbreaking here at Cedar Point but I did put it at number three for our rides today. So Maverick places right after Millennium Force for the groundbreaking technology that it had. Maverick does have some incredible views of the beach, but those views are a little bit muted because first of all, the fall, uh, the initial fall is not that far. They shoot you out going very, very fast. Um, but because they shoot you out, you don't have to go up as high. So instead, you end up just uh, not really seeing a ton of the beach, of the water, of the skyline. So I put it right after Millennium Force um, and, Ma and Magnum uh, for views. Speed was actually the very first thing that I judged about Maverick as soon as I got off it. And even while, while I was on the ride, <laughs> I was just going, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one beats out Steel Vengeance for speed. It also beats out Steel Vengeance for smoothness. So, uh, I was, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that today. And um, I'm a little bit surprised at how high that is ranking in my, in my rankings. Although, we'll uh, check them out and see where they actually fall. 
Our next ride is Iron Dragon. For a 15 minute wait, this is nothing. Let's go. All right, it has officially been a 10 minute wait to get up on the loading dock. So it'll be like, I don't know, maybe 12 minute wait overall. Maybe 15 minutes. Um, not very long at all. I have one group in front of me before I get on. And uh, let's go. I'm gonna interrupt this video here just really, really fast because I forgot to rank Iron Dragons. So any rankings of this ultimately changes, I will make note of. I don't think it's gonna change very much, but let's get into this. So Iron Dragon is a very smooth ride, but it's not like the most smooth ride that I've ever ridden. <laughs> it, especially at the very end, it really hits hard. Um, like if you watch the the cars as they come in they swing Crazy when they're when they come into the very end of their track um, But it is it is pretty smooth. It is very fun because the trains do swing um, that adds a, a level of uh, smoothness to it also um, and Actually, my daughter was just able to ride it this last week and uh, she absolutely loved it. So it is a great ride, especially a great starter coaster for kids um, who are tall enough to be able to ride the, the bigger rides at Cedar Point. Iron Dragon at its inception was not particularly high concept or technology. Um, once again, it's very similar to like Cedar Creek Mine Ride, Pipe Scream, um, some of those rides, uh, Rougarou maybe even, um, just not particularly high in technology. I gave it 11th place out of 13 rides uh, for technology. Because Iron Dragon is a smooth ride, um, it's one that doesn't hurt, um, and that's really the thing that uh, like beefs it up when it comes to excitement, especially over Rougarou. Um, it's one that when you're on it, you're not gonna feel nauseous, you are gonna feel happy that you rode it, but it's one of the least exciting rides probably at Cedar Point. So I gave it 10th place out of the 13 rides that we rode at this point. You don't get a lot of views of either the lake or of the theme park when you are riding Iron Dragon, but you do get beautiful views of just an isolated lake inside of Cedar Point. Plus, it also goes right through the trees. You're you're like right in the middle of Cedar Point uh, when you are riding Iron Dragon. And so, it, it it's also just really well situated that you go like right down over this lake. It feels like you're gonna go right into the water. Um, then there is like fog all around. So it feels like you're like, making a dive right into the water. It is very thrilling. It's a fun experience. That is another part of excitement on it also. I gave it right around the middle of the pack at sixth place out of 13 rides that we'd ridden so far at this point in the day. The second half of Iron Dragon really does get some decent speed going on, but even then, it's not much. Now, one thing that Iron Dragon does have in its favor is that there aren't a lot of obstacles. You don't go upside down. Um, like I said before, the track is very smooth and it also swings from side to side as you are going through it. So you don't have a ton of like really jerky moments. That being said though, there are so many rides at Cedar Point and those rides go extremely fast. So when we're talking even Gatekeeper, we're talking Gemini, those are much, much faster rides than Iron Dragon. And those rides do feel fast also. Even if they do, even if like Gemini does hurt sometimes. So once again, I gave Iron Dragon 10th place out of 13 rides that had been reviewed at this point. Overall, that gives Iron Dragon 9th place just after Gemini and just before Rougarou on the total list of our Cedar Point rides. It is 4.44 and I have two rides left to complete the entire ride list. It is time for ranking my least favorite ride in this park, but it doesn't need a roasting from me. It's gonna be gone very soon. So we need to enjoy it while we have it. We have one more week of Wicked Twister left. So it's time to go get in line for Wicked Twister. 
Nice short line for Wicked Twister. All right, it's been about 15 minutes wait to get on to Wicked Twister. So let's go. All right, Wicked Twister. Nothing inspires anxiety like a Wicked Twister. <laughs> I'm telling you. I've ridden that a handful of times this year, and every single time it doesn't make it better. <laughs> the other ones got better. This one does not get better. If you can call being shot out of a barrel at 70 miles per hour smooth, then yes, Wicked Twister is smooth. It, I would say it actually is a pretty smooth ride overall. Um, the experience does not lend itself to seeming smooth though. So I put Wicked Twister at fifth place for smooth, for that smooth ride experience. Um, it's certainly not jerky, but like I said, it does shoot you out at an ungodly amount of, of uh, miles per hour. And then you go up and down, back and forth. So, I mean, Yes, it's, it's fairly smooth. <laughs> At the time it was made, Wicked Twister did not have a tremendous amount of technology used in it, um, but it did have some technology. Like, it was a um, kind of a novel idea that you would go straight up. Um, like I said before, that's not something that we really had, especially not until Valraven was created. We had a very steep decline on Millennium Force, and before that, we had a less steep decline on Magnum. Um, but they were still trying to perfect that whole like deep drop kind of a situation. So Wicked Twister had kind of a novelty to it that it was basically straight up and straight down again. Um, it was one more way that you were able to do that. And then there was uh, Top Thrill Dragster that came out shortly after that. I wouldn't call that like a really high amount of technology use. Um, I would say that it was mediocre. So Wicked Twister receives ninth place out of the 13 rides that we have reviewed so far. All right, for me, Wicked Twister is not a ride that makes me excited. <laughs> there is no excitement factor to that ride because I am just terrified. That's all I'm doing. I'm just sitting there gritting my teeth and waiting for it to be over. <laughs> It is another ride that I don't see a lot of people like actively excited about after it's done. Um, but I will give it this. It is a ride that I do not feel actively sick with once I am done either. So rides like uh, Cedar Creek Mine Ride or um, I, I guess not really Pipe Scream, but Pipe Scream is boring enough. I just don't feel excited on it. Those have been lower rated on this particular list um, than, than Wicked Twister. Wicked Twister is more exciting or at least more neutral than those rides that just make you sick rather than uh, allowing you to at least have a little bit of fun even though that fun is terrified fun. So that's my justification for my ranking there. <laughs> Let me know what your ranking is down below. <laughs> First of all, how are you going to look at the beach while you're on Wicked Twister? You, you'd have to look up and like out in order to see the beach. So no, there are no views on Wicked Twister. You do have some views um, in the line of Twister, but that doesn't count. The line is not the ride itself. We are talking about the ride today and while you are on that ride, no. There are no views. All you see is the person in front of you, the back of their head. So, no, this is one where it gets a number 13 rating for um, views on Wicked Twister. Now that Dragster is closed, Wicked Twister is the last bastion of the like shoot you out rides other than Maverick, which does shoot you out, but not quite as fast. Um, so it does need to be high up on this list. I gave Wicked Twister fifth place for speed. Wicked Twister gets eighth place out of 14 rides ranked so far. We have an incredibly short line here on Blue Streak uh, today. This should take a matter of 
just a couple of minutes. You gotta remember to send Blue Streak a card thanking Blue Streak for reminding me that I need to lose that little extra bit of weight. <laughs> <laughs> because Blue Streak hurts. It hurts so bad. So let's get into the ranking for Blue Streak, the final ranking of the day. For the smooth factor, Blue Streak receives last place, dead last. <laughs> it is number 14 for smoothness. It is not smooth, it hurts. The floor underneath you moves all around. The back of it moves around. I mean, it has to, it's, it's supposed to. It's a wooden coaster, it's an old wooden coaster. That is the way it works. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> Especially not on this 34 year old body. So, <laughs> keep that in mind when you ride it. For technology though, Blue Streak receives fourth place. Um, I don't really know what the state of roller coasters was in 1964 when Blue Streak was made, but it definitely was a big deal. Like, it was extremely tall. Like, that thing, that that's huge in 1964. So, I did rank it high. Um, not, not necessarily the highest though, uh, because the others, I know the state of roller coasters at that time in particular. Maybe someday I'll delve more into the history of roller coasters. At this point, it's more of just a fun thing. It's not, it's not really a uh, research thing. For the excitement rating, Blue Streak receives 10th place. Um, it is not really the most exciting ride. There are some that just hurt and you don't have fun. This one you do have fun. Like the airtime is incredible. When I was on the ride, even someone said, "Man, the airtime is is awesome on this ride." Yeah, they're not wrong. It is. Also, just the old school feel of it and being able to feel the boards move under your feet, like that is something that is exciting. It is different. It feels like a transportation back into the past, and um, I definitely think it's worthwhile. So while certain rides hurt and don't offer anything else besides just that ache in your bones. This and I would say Raptor provide you with a lot more than just a hurt. Instead, they provide you with a lot of fun, a ton of fun even, and then it also hurts on the side, which I mean, we don't like that, but it's still really fun. So I would say as far as views go, Blue Streak is pretty comparable to Corkscrew, but I did place it one lower than Corkscrew even. Um, be Not just lower than Corkscrew, but lower than the, than the ride after Corkscrew. Because on Corkscrew, you can see the Grand Hotel. On Blue Streak, you can see the water, but there's just not a ton that you can see. And most of what you're looking out toward is the parking lot during your ride. So the view is, Met in this ride. It receives seventh place for its view. For the age of the ride, I would actually say that I ranked Blue Streak very highly, or pretty highly anyway, for speed. It does go really fast. It does get good airtime. It does hurt while it's doing that also, especially for the time and just for the kind of ride that it is, you're definitely moving. Like you are booking when you're going um, down Blue Streak. So I ranked it eighth place out of the 14 rides that we rode today um, here at Cedar Point, all before dinner. <laughs> if my calculations are correct, Maverick has won. Maverick is a great ride and was the surprise of the day. I thought that Millennium Force would definitely win this hands down because obviously the things that are my favorites are the things that are my favorites, right? So <laughs> speaking of, if you have a list of criteria that you think would be fun to judge uh, these roller coasters on, please leave your list of criteria down below. I would love to hear them. But uh, one condition applies. It has to have a really, really stupid acronym that um, is like some sort of a dumb sounded out word. Like if it doesn't have that, I won't even look twice at it. So, <laughs> so leave a dumb acronym down below. Anyway, I am a little bit surprised about Maverick. I do think that Maverick is a great ride, um, but it is higher ranked than I thought it would be, especially on a list that is curated by me, you know? So, um, but it is a ride that I absolutely love. You also can see the rest of my list right over here. If you have a list, please leave it down below. I'd love to hear what your list 
your favorite rides here at Cedar Point are. I would love to hear that. I want to know what you guys think about this, and this is just my opinion. Even though I was trying to be somewhat objective, it's still my opinion. So, I want to hear yours also. So, let's go leave your list over, well, down in the comments. Leave your list down in the comments. Well, friends, that ought to just about wrap up our day here at Cedar Point riding every ride. I was able to successfully ride every single roller coaster here at Cedar Point before dinner. <laughs> I don't know how that happened on a Saturday. I think we would have probably uh, fared well one way or another, even if it was more of a popular day, but to have ridden every single one of them, that goes a little bit beyond what I was expecting, <laughs> especially um, to have ridden them all by, I don't know, 6.30, something like that right now. Um, if it's even six, it might not even be six. It might be like 5.50, something like that. Let's look. Yes, it is 5.54, so we still have four more hours that we could spend in the park, but this video is over right now. Now, come back though, because we will be discussing the best bars and the best places to get drinks in the next video. And that's coming up right after this. I'm just heading out for a second and coming right back into the park. Uh, I hope you will join me for that again soon here. Um, if you haven't yet, please press that subscribe button. I would love it if you would join this Roller Coaster Loving family. Uh, we, we would welcome you. <laughs> so press that red subscribe button. It doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't cost you anything. Again, thank you guys so much for watching today. And let's go.